So this is a particular composite subjected to implant shear deformation on the XY plane. And what you can see quickly right away is that there is a deformation in this direction and a deformation in that direction which creates the shear deformation. And that's the represented volume element of this particular composite. If you want to see how this model is set up, then sit back and relax as I'll show you exactly how to do so. With this sort of model, the first challenge that you need to encounter is how to create the representative volume element of this particulate composite. And you can do it manually, but it's not always very easy. So I've written a software called Gen Particle 3D, which can actually help you to do this. So look at the description section of the video where you can download not only the software that I'm talking about, but also access to all the materials that we're generating as a function of making this video. So let's look into what we have here. So basically, this is what the software looks like. So it's called Gen Particle 3D. It's an executable that runs within MATLAB. And what we have here is a computational options file, which is exactly already opened here. So it sort of guides how you set up this model. So the first thing we need to do here is to choose the material type that we want to work with. So we want to work with a particular composite. There is option of working with voids or micro capsules. There's also the dimensions of the system we want to work with. So in this case, we're working with 10 by 10 by 10. So which is the geometry length. So it's a cubic RVE of 10 microns by 10 microns by 10 microns. And the diameter range of the particles that we want to work with is exactly the same. So we want it to be three. But because of the way the code works, it wants you to specify more than one because we're looking at the range. And so if we're working with exactly the same parameter, the same diameter, then we actually need just three, three as many times as possible. So the volume fraction of the particulate system is that 20%. The particle type will be one in this case, in telling the code that we are interested in spherical shapes. There are other shapes that are important. And then the particle color is just to show the plot at the end what it's going to look like. And we could, we could say, okay, maybe we want a particle type that looks gray. So if I make that change it to gray, the particle set spacing is the minimum spacing between two close, closest touching particles. Remember, the particles are going to be generated using a multicolor approach. So I specified, okay, that we're going to work with some silicon carbide and aluminum composite system. And these are the parameters for the Young's modules and the Poisson ratio for those constituents. Here, I've also asked it to trim the final generated model from what it was fully by 20% of the idea is that you want to expose what is inside the system so that we have particles appearing on the edges because the way the code will create it initially is everything will be completely intact but when you trim off the edges then you expose what is inside and then you can then see the effect of so you know uh, edge particles on the simulation and always think that it's important to have that effect in setting up this kind of model so everything here is set up properly so we'll right click on this and then we'll tell it just to run this model and so it runs and instantly you see it creates the domain that we want and what we have here is that the particles are that gray colors that we wanted and for a range of three by three three and three microns and the volume fraction it generated was able to generate was about 19.7 or 19.8 approximately 20 percent this is always something you have to do when you're trying to numerically generate volume fractions using this multicolor approach at times it approaches the desired value maybe not always exactly in this instance okay you know you have to then work with this number or you increase the dimension of the rv in order to accommodate it but we're happy with this i'm happy with 19.7 approximately 20 percent so if we then go back and look into the model you see there's a, a, a folder created here which is an rv a present volume element with 10 q so that's the dimensions you open that it tells me okay there's a first outcome and it's got 14 spherical particles within it and that's what we see here so if we open that there's other information but what we really want to is look at the abacus simulation folder so we look at the abacus simulation folder it has a python script that is created by this code this is one of the best features of this code in the sense that when you visualize what has been done in matlab you want to take this into abacus and the challenge is how do you do this so this python script is the search way that helps you take information from matlab into abacus and so if we open this outside of matlab then we can see all right, so it tells us the classic structure of an abacus Python code. So right at the top, we find the information and then it creates the model here and then follow through. Again, this script will be available for you to download in the description section of the video. So just find it. You can use this script just to play around and follow along. So what we need to do when we get into abacus is basically say file. We're going to run the script now and then we'll put the position, we put the location. So that's the same code here. So what it will do now, it will quickly remaster the whole thing. And at the moment, it's cutting through, trimming off, and then releasing the internal fibers as desired. 
So if I switch this to material so you can see absolutely it looks right we want. So where the white regions are the particulate systems and the green region are the metric system. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to mesh this model. So if I go under the path module, so you can see this is a fully path module and there's also a mesh component, which is the, the particles themselves. So we're going to work with the full mesh model. So under the meshing, so I'm going to accept 0 0.8 that is given me naturally. And then I'm going to tell it to basically work with a tetrahedron. Okay, so tetrahedron is fine. And then we can go ahead and mesh. The next thing that we're going to look at is the material. So under the material model, the metric system has already got the elastic properties that came from gen particle 3D from the other code. The particular system has also been then. What we don't have is a bit of the plastic behavior of the system. So I'm going to quickly add a plastic behavior to the system. So this is aluminum, I know that the young, the strength of aluminum is 250 megapascal, so 0, 0.0. So we can then, okay, maybe 220 to power six and 0 0.05, 200 to power six, and maybe 0 0.10, maybe 150 to power 0.50, and maybe 50 to power six, 0 0.1.00. So the idea here is that you just want to introduce some sort of post yield softening to the system so that you can then have more activity in terms of how the simulation will show at the end with your result. So we've got a metric that has plasticity incorporated within it. The particles are all elastic, so there's no problem with that. So then we can work our way down to within the assembly module. So I'm going to have to create certain sets set that we need for running the simulation so we the first thing we're going to do is to look at the x front set so with the x front set so i'm going to say all i'm interested are the faces and i'm going to select it by face angle so the x front face does that so it's so if we switch this to set so that's clear so we will do the same with the top face so y top face so we'll do the same at the top because we're going to use that to apply our load. Remember, we're doing a share loading, so we're going to share this end and that end. So the corresponding other faces that will apply will be the X back and the Y base. So we'll do that. So we're going to take a Y base as another set. So I'm going to rotate it so that I can see the Y base, So which is that. So that is done. And then we then need to look at the X back phase. So this becomes X back. Um, as a set, so we're working with that. So in this way, we've got all these sets that we're going to use in manipulating and applying our key or share loading. So the other thing that we need to do is that we need to find reference points. So, and this still within the assembly module. So I'm going to find two points. So if I pick here, so the first point there, so it gives me at 991, and then the other point here, it gives me as 191. So I'm going to apply reference point first in the first case, so I'm going to make it 10, 1, 1. So that means a point that is very close to that point. And then we'll do the same to this other point. So which will be 1, 10, 1. So that's another reaction point, reference point at that. So we need to also make those sets because that's how we're going to call them within a star equation. So I'm going to call this first one reaction point 1 set. So that goes to here. So okay, I don't want that. So I'm going to say all and then I can select that. So that's for that. And then we'll do the same reaction point two set. So we'll select the one at the top and that's fine. So we'll just do a few more things. So my loading history or loading step. So static general is normally fine. The boundary conditions. So I'm going to apply a boundary condition loading. So this will be my Y, X, Y share load. So the X, Y share load is going to work with reaction point one set. Okay, so and I'm going to deform it in the y direction. So let's use 2.7, about 30% strain in that direction. So that means you are deforming it in the upward direction. So the other one will be um, y x shear load. So this will be applied on reference point 2, and we're going to deform it in the one direction and put 2.7 as well. So you can see what we are trying to do here is that we are deforming this point up and deforming that point this way to create the shared deformation expected, but they are currently not connected to the faces of interest. And so how do we make that happen? So we now use a constraint equation to do that. So my XY constraint using a star equation option will be one, 
the reaction force phase that we're interested in this case will be the x front and we're sharing in the two directions so this is why the x y comes in so x y and then the degree of freedom on this other side will be minus the reaction point one in the two directions so again if you're interested in understanding how these equations work please look at this video that i've made where i explain this in more detail for your understanding that this is a kinematical constraint equation that makes a connection between the loading that will appear here and that face in the two direction so we'll do the same for the y x constraint so again a similar thing one minus one and we're working with the y top in this instance and it's going to be in the one direction one direction with the reaction point two so basically what we're doing here is that we are sharing in the one direction with respect to the white top so again that point is connected to that face so this way we are then creating this shared deformation using this kinematical constraint argument that i'm using in this video so the final thing that we then have to do is to look at the back constraint so if we are going to share in the y direction on this face so the back end would have to be held securely so we're going to say okay my x y fixed on the x back so it's not going to be a loading step, it's going to be an initial step. So we're going to select the back, okay? So we will select, because we are moving in this direction, so we want the X not to be selected, so the two and the three would work. Because if we select the one direction, we're going to prevent it from sliding in the other direction. And remember, to slide in this particular phase would have to slide in one direction. So one will not be selected, only two and three will be fixed. And then we'll do the same with the Y base. So Y, X, base, fixed okay so again the y base is what we want so similar to what we did before so remember is the one direction that we are sharing so we definitely need the one and then we need the three we don't want to select two because if we select two then this face because that's part of this face will not be able to slide up so we only want one and three so and that's sort of how you're going to impose the share loading the pure share loading boundary condition wise and loading condition wise to create a pure share with this simulation. The other final things we need to do is to ask for certain history output so that we can generate stress and strain data from this. So the first history output will be my reaction point one history output. So remember that will be a set associated with reaction point one and we are moving in the two directions. So reaction force in the two and U in the two will be what we need. So we're asking it to give us the reaction force and the displacement of that point. So we'll do the same for reaction point two, reaction point two history output and what would that be so again a set associated with that point so reaction force in the one direction and you in the one direction because again if you remember this one direction this part will be sliding in the one direction so we are going to then get that result for that so everything there is set up properly we now need to submit this model and then we'll look at the result now that we've submitted the job and the brand and this is sort of the outcome that you're going to generate from this and this is what we see here so a perfect simulation where you've got this face that is moving inward you've got this face that is moving this way so if i compare what will happen so if we put it together then you can see nicely what's happening this face is moving inward in the x direction and this face is moving upward in the y direction and you get a really nice simulation of how the shear is behaving so this is why we call it a pure shear simulation because you get this nice behavior of the system the base is moving the top is moving and a perfect shear deformation and interestingly you could also see what's happening in some of the particles for example the particle at the top here seem to be twisting and bending bending due to the shear deformation you can see what's happening to this particle due to the deformation you can see also there seem to be a lot of reinforcement around this particle is moving outward on the other direction during the deformation just some really very random interesting behavior and and this is really excellent to see because that's what you want with a micromechanical simulation you want it to show the true random behavior of what it will need to show during the simulation so we can explore a little bit further on this so if i say okay if i hide this material which is the fiber so it will now show us also the matrix alone and we can see what's really happening with the matrix alone so there are the regions inside the structure with the matrix showing the formation even at the back all very interesting behavior as you would ex expect and we could also invert this so if, so if i switch it back to stress so i can invert this and then you can see just the particles alone 
which again is also very interesting because what's happening with the particles is that they are sort of doing the deformation so you can see this is sort of touching that one and then you're getting really some interesting interaction between the systems due to the deformation which which is sort of why the system seems to be delving due to the effect of this pushing against it that's why it's twisting down and and just so interesting behavior across the bulk which is what we want from a simulation like this so from visualization of the problem we're happy with what we see but obviously what we want to do is to look at the actual stress strain data so what we do is that we're going to use this create xy data we use history outputs so the first thing we want to look at is the xy share so that means we're interested in the y displacement and the y force together so if we plot that so we get again some really interesting simulation results that we can see here so it does show the deformation in the one direction and then the shear as well so we're going to then do plugin tools excel utility and then we're just going to ask it to output this into excel for us so this is sort of the data that you generate directly by exporting that so the first column is always time and then you get the reaction force in the two direction time again and the displacement in the two direction so i'll just select all of that control a control c to copy so this is a template that i've already prepared to receive this data so the first part here i'll just paste this information here so this becomes the first region and then it gives us the xy share data as expected here so we also need to get the reaction force one and displacement one so we go back to abacus and then ask for a history output remember the reaction force one and the displacement one so we plot that again so it gives us reaction force one displacement one so we can again do the excel utility data from current plot so again we'll just do the same control a to select all and control c to copy so we'll come back here and paste that data here okay and then it generates also the data for the y x shear and instantly most of them are coming up exactly the same so again we change the lv lens to 9 by 9 by 9 which is the size that we're working with the shear modulus will be calculated based on the elastic region of that region so basically these two points will be used to calculate the shear modulus on the xy plane so the same thing with the other shear modulus also in the yx in the y x plane so again those two points and they are coming up exactly the same so the effective strength is calculated as the absolute maximum of the data that's what we find here is a comparison between the two the y x share and the x y share they are coming up exactly the same way the share modulus is coming up at this and the strength use trend is also coming up at this of course you can go ahead and try and make some predictions of these numbers to see whether they actually match using analytical classical lamination theory if that's what you want but at the moment you know we, we are getting good predictions for the x y share and the y x share and the strength values they all make sense and so this is the sort of things that we can do this micromechanical rv based modeling like this if you are interested in seeing how the same thing can be done for a tensile test then this is the video that i would like you to see if you also want to learn how you can set up this manually without relying on a code like the one that i've used here then this is a video that can help you thank you for your interest in this channel and i'll see you in the next video bye bye